Welcome everybody to Relax and Paint. I am in a little bit of spirit being the beginning of November to um, paint some Christmas and be thinking about um, during this month, the thing that I thought was really important is what we're thankful for. So it's a good time to be with family or it might be a sad time to know family has uh, passed away and, and they won't be with us. But we can think about the good things about the ones that have passed away and know that they're watching down over us. And um, that I, I know that's easy said, but I do know when I lost my daughter, Maria, that she is up there watching over us. And that comforts me. And I hope that comforts you. Um, I, uh, I am making a list of what I'm thankful for in the month of November. Um, it is my birthday this month, and um, and then we get to have a wonderful Thanksgiving with, I have seven children, Maria has passed away, but we have six living children, and all their spouses, and all the grandbabies, and so it's exciting during this time of the year, and thank goodness for um, social media, because I can see what my grandkids in Utah are doing, so let's get started. Um, I think you'll like this our little bird and some pine cones and let's just go for it okay so let's get started right now and what we're going to do i'm trying to be more peaceful so people can still be sleeping in the house okay so right here people which right now is only my husband says my grandson got married um so we are using multi-surface paints and um Multi-surface means exactly what it says. It's like glass, metal, wood, canvas, all kinds of wonderful surfaces, okay? And this is my plaid, and it's the paint that I represent. And I love it for one stroke. It works beautifully. And so I want to share with you, and black sometimes makes the camera fight, but I want to share with you uh, some really pretty simple strokes that are going to make this um, bird just stand out okay so the only thing I don't have on here is the floating medium and with paper we need floating medium and we don't use water so I just want you to know that I put that little liquid in there and people always ask what's that clear liquid liquid so that's what the clear liquid is this is art paper I just get a pad of it and I like the smoothest one you can get, not the dry, dry kind of feel. You can open it up and you can tell this feels slick. Okay. So here we go. So the, I'm not going to draw, but I might draw out just the bird. Well, I could go ahead and draw the bird first, maybe. And that might help you with perspective of everything else. All right. So we don't want him too small but we don't want, we like a maybe more actual size. So I think you can see this. So there's a couple of ways to do birds. Today, I'm gonna to do the one, um, a simple shape of a bird. Here's where his beak is gonna be, okay, right here. And the beak goes in and out. Out for the triangle and in for a triangle. All right, so then we scoop down for his neck because he's looking up and his tummy, all right? And it goes right here. Well, so now the key is not to look like there's a ball on the top of the body. So I like you to, I like you to come on up and this chickadee is going to be fun. I've been painting a lot of chickadees lately. So here's the rounded part of the head, all right? So your neck is right here. And there's markings that make the chickadee look like a chickadee. And that's part of the head. This part and this part um, will make it look like that. Now, I'm going to turn it a little bit this way so I can draw it pretty easy. All right. So we have the curve of the wing. Okay. And before I do the wing now, I'm going to have this tail coming up. So it's short longer short and back all right so you see it's skinnier here 
and it does not fluff out some people make it look like it fans it's tight this one is tight you might have a um I mean bird that is a little fanned out sometimes all right so I'm going to sketch along here and I want this wing to come to right here and the wing actually covers where the tail was you see that all right so we're going to come around we have this curved here I, can, I might want this to curve a little bit more this way so it's more rounded okay he's gonna look like he's got a pretty um chubby little tummy there all right one thing i want you to see when i'm doing this is usually this tail is going to attach to where this body is and i made it way out here do you see the difference okay so we're going to come out here i think you'll like this lesson it'll help you see See how this curves and it's going to come back straight to the tail. And then we can have it sitting on the branch so he'll have his talons right there. Okay. And remember the eye is always in the scoop right here. Okay. There's your little bird. And if it was a cardinal or a blue jay, you put a peak going straight up here on his head. So there's just some simple little steps that make that easy. All right, so now I've got my 12 flat. This is my Donna DeBerry value pack brushes. 1059s are what they are. If you're looking on my onestroke.com site, onestroke.com, I can't even talk. All right, so <clears throat> my morning voice here. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to get a little bit of white. I dried off the water that I picked up. You've got to get the sizing out of the brush when you first get them also. And I'm going to lead with the white. So I'm up on the chisel. See that up on the chisel? All right. So I'm going to have some branches this way, this way, some pine needles. I'm going to do a couple of pine cones, I think. And then I'm going to have this branch here that he's going to sit on. And I have that coming out here. All right. Now that's white. I'll pull this over so y'all can see it more. Okay. So I got some white on one side and burn umber on the other. Okay. And we have a few twigs here. And this is burn umber and wicker white. I might put some holly down here. All right. Well, one of the first things is let's put, I'm not going to even clean the brush. I'm just going to go right here and pick up some more white and some citrus. Citrus or happy green. Okay. Let me start over here. I'm not making this clear. I am going to take citrus and sap. Teeny bit of white on the citrus. That's where I was messing up. Get some floating medium and work that in. Okay. Now, the first thing we're going to do is let's pick this up and because I want you to see good. If I lead with the light green, the dark's going to be there and you don't really see it. So I want to flip it over and lead with the dark and then your pine needles. See how I'm touching and pulling and my whole hand. Don't do this. Take your whole hand with you. I, I don't lay my arm down because I need it to flow. Okay. All right, so then I'm going to keep coming over here and get more citrus. And I have uh, some more right here. And I can do short evergreen pine needles. Okay, those are long light pines. Um, and these are shorter ones. Okay, so I can come out here too. See, I keep coming. I don't know if you can see, but I keep coming over there and 
getting citrus and sap. Okay. My little finger, my little finger helps me keep it the same height as I'm trying to pull this in here. All right, we'll do another little. Okay. And I can put some little sprigs in here. But you could put these sprigs after you paint your holly down here. Okay. So the bird is the feature. So we're going to go around and try to make sure that we make that bird still stand out. I put a little bit more there because I felt like they, they uh, disappeared on me. All right. So now I'm going to pick up some white on the citrus. The two things the camera doesn't like is white and black. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to come in here and I want to push down. Now this makes this a little large, but I'm going to just go ahead and do that. You can get a smaller brush. So I touch and pull. So I'm leaning the dark green down. Push and pull. All right. Now, I can also turn this the other way and then lean the light green down and slowly come in here. I'm going to pull this down. And if the light green goes down, then the dark green is going to be showing. All right. And we're going to put pine cones in there. So this might not show as well as it's showing now. So now there's another color that I, I like doing in here, and that is a little bit of lighter green. So I've got to work that into the citrus. If I touch this and lean forward a little bit with my handle, it gives me the rounded. Or you can get the round brush and use it. Okay. So see that white? I thought that white turned out pretty good. So I'm going to get a little bit more of white. In here, we're going to put a pine cone in here. So maybe let's put a little bit. That's where the pine cone goes. All right, we'll balance that out a little bit. Now, I do want to show you, I'll wipe that off. I do want to show you that if I come in here with an eight, we can get a nicer little mix of green and have these little teeny little teeny leaves that are going to be all in here. All right, so. We could get a six, maybe. This is still a little big. I just let a little bit on the branches underneath here. There we go. Okay, so let's put, let's go back to, let's go to a 10. These are all the flats. And you'll notice I use a lot of flats. All right, so I'm gonna put a pine cone in here. There we go. All right, so then I'm going to pick up some white. So I side loaded the brown brush with some white on the corner. All right, so then this is what I want you to see. If I come up here, scoop up, scoop up. 
Now, so there, I have all kinds of different pine cones you can go learn. All right. And I have to go get a little bit more white. So this is if you're looking at it from this view. You can do it where you're looking down at it. Or I do, sometimes I use metallic gold, treasure gold, and do another type of pine cone. Let's see, these all come down here. And then I'm going to get some burn umber. And you pull a stem down. Okay, so we're just getting this. Let's come a little bit bigger out here. So you come here and do a little bit there and a little bit there. And then we pull this down. All right. That's just a simple little pine cone. And then I, what I want to show you is going back to the 12, we're going to do a little bit of white over here with the citrus for a light green. Okay. Now these holly leaves are kind of frustrating for some people. So let me show you, I'm going to go, if you just draw a point, 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 one, two, three, and then we can do another one here. A little bit, so one here, then it'll be easier to follow those. Where, oh, here's one there. Okay. So let's try that. All right, I'm going to have the dark green on the outside. I'm going to go up to that point, up to this point. Now watch, I point. All right, I come down, I pressure, lift, pressure, lift, pressure, lift. Okay. Let's do the same thing again here. Point, pressure, point, pressure, point, and go to the point. And then you just pull a stem in the middle, okay? Now I'm not saying these are easy, but they're, they, it looks fun when you get through doing it. So just remember, you go back over it, it's larger and it gets smaller. All right, right here too. I'm going over it again so you can see. Then you pull a stem right in the middle. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit of medium on this one. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller here. All right. I lost control on that one, so you just come right back here and go to the point. So you need to watch this over and over a few times right here, and then try stroking it, and then see if you feel like it looks like mine. All right, so there we go. So I'm not pushing down as much pressure. I'm staying up on the chisel for the smaller ones, see? Okay, all right. So, so far, just kind of fun, not much there. I'm not gonna put on, I want some red berries. I can't put them on while I'm still working on the bird because I might touch the berries, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to come in here with the white on the bird. So the bird comes right here, and I've got an eight flat. So it fits in here, okay? All right, I can even put some white in the middle of the wing. But I'm under his chin, under the wing. I keep getting white. All right, so I'm just going to come right along here and do the tummy. 
All right, so you can come in here and make like little strokes. All right, to give it a little bit of texture, or I could get a teeny bit of licorice and make some gray. Okay, so what that does is just in this tummy part, I could do feathery. Okay, now, now what I want to do is come back in here and sideload this white brush with some licorice. Okay, so let's do this tail first because it's going to be underneath. All right, so I'm going to come right here and make my strokes out to the point. All right, and then, so can you see that? So then I'm going to pull this in. I'm going to flip the brush so the white shows. And it's got to go under the wing. So what you could do is you, you can even put a little bit more white. And this gray is going to go under the wing. All right. So, and we also have some of this same color while I've got it on the brush that was going to come out here. So a little bit of a wing and I don't want it to flip up. I almost made it flip up there. All right. So we're going to come right in here. With this dark. All right. So see how the dark goes right to there. Back and forth. All right, now I do pick up a little bit more licorice to come out here. Get a little bit along this bottom of the wing. Flat, pick up more. All right, so we're going to come right in here. Those look like feathers. Flatten the brush again. Just little teeny strokes like that makes it look like different feathers. You see that? So what happens in here is there's a back wing and a front wing when I put that little line there. All right. So I'm going to get rid of this brush because I'm doing around the face and we need smaller brushes. So let's get our six. All right. So I'm going to pick up licorice. Now it is black in the background. So that's going to be a little tricky. Let's see if it shows. Because if it doesn't, I can put a little teeny bit of gray on the outside edge. Come right in here. Okay, and then under the beak, right down in here. All right, is feathers that are going to go from there. All right. Let me go a little higher. Now, I am going to kind of bring some of that gray in there so it shows up. There we go. And let's bring a teeny bit of gray along the top here. There. All right. There, that works, right? Make that smooth all the way to that point. All right, now I'm going to go to my two. So all flats, all these are flats, two flats. All right, I'm going to wet it. Then I'm going to pick up, I'm going to have to add black with a teeny bit of white, licorice and a little bit of white to get this little beak. It'll show in the white. But I need it to be gray out here so it shows. And right now it's not showing. So we're going to come right in there. Let me see if I can take some of that off. I made it way too big. Okay, so I got a little trick because that's not showing. It's making the beak look really big. I want to work a little teeny bit of plain licorice underneath. 
because I want it to be small. All right, so to fix this, you need to get a teeny bit of white and work it in so it looks gray. There we go. See how that white underneath just fixes it. There we go. Now, this had just a teeny bit of white on the outside edge. And this is how we make the eye. We just touch here and we make a half of a circle. Okay, see just a little half of a circle. And then I have a one liner, which looks like a teeny round brush. And I'm just gonna come right here and put, I usually put a couple little dots, one there and another one. All right, so see how simple that was. Now I'm gonna take the same one and I'm gonna do his talons, like three of them, like you don't see the other side. So we just go a little bit of white on it. Work your white here. One, two, three. And that goes around the branch. All right, so I know it's cute, but it just needs something. And that are those little berries. So I'm gonna do dip dot with my handle. And I'm going to grab a little bit of fresh apple red. And I'm gonna come right in here and put those in there, little berries there, maybe one or two along here. And then we'll have, every once in a while you can just do like one out somewhere here. And I like a cluster down here by the pine cone, up here by the pine cone. So he would be sitting here because he would be wanting to eat those berries. Okay, so I'm right here inside the holly. These are holly berries. All right, is that enough? <laughs> I think that's a fun, imagine making this. This is a fun greeting card. And you can paint one and then go have them printed, even at the drugstore. Or you might have a nice printer at home where you can print them. Or you can just sit and hand paint. You just sit and um, draw your bird and put that bird on each one and then sit there when you have time and just work on evergreen. All right, I can come around here, like one, two, three, and just do some little teeny touches and then sign it. Yeah, put it down so it's not shaking all over the place. And there you go. You can put a little white dots on some of the berries if you want. And I hope you enjoyed this. I'm excited to give it a little bit towards the Christmas season so you have time maybe to do a few things that you might want to do for the holidays coming up. Get your Christmas cards done. How's that sound? Please, please paint. Share some of your painting on my Donna Dewberry's official one stroke group on it's official because everybody there's a lot of one stroke groups out there. It's official one stroke group uh, on Facebook. Okay. So please share. We'd love for you to come join us over there. It's private just for people who want to share their one stroke with us. And I will see you on Friday. We're going to do ribbons and bows. So come check those out. Thank you. Bye-bye.